lot of people are big on fasting here now in terms of controlling your insulin resistance how does fasting factor in okay fasting intermittent fasting is a thing that you can do that mimics calorie restriction so let's take a quick trip back to the 1930s uh there was a researcher named clive mckay who started experimenting with calorie restriction and he took mice and he restricted their food intake by 10% and tried to figure out what effect it would have on them. And lo and behold, lowering their caloric intake increased their lifespan. Very unexpected. They were like, wait, what? We fed them less food and they lived longer? Then they did another experiment. They said, well, what if we restricted by 25%? They restricted by 25%. They lived even longer. 30% even longer. 50% even longer. Repeated this process over and over again. And they, they eventually determined that you can restrict the intake the, the, cal the caloric intake of animals by up to 60% and you will still push their longevity. They'll, they'll, they'll be alive for a longer period of time. These, these experiments were repeated in multiple different species, okay? Intermittent fasting works in yeast, flies, worms, mice, rats, monkeys, and humans, okay? It's the most conserved, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nutritional intervention that's ever been studied that has shown that in every single species study to date, lowering your calorie intake has tremendous benefits on your brain health, on your thyroid health, on your liver health, on your heart health, on your vascular health, on your kidney health, on your sexual function, on your skin health, on your muscle health, you name it. There's almost no tissue that doesn't benefit from lower calorie intake. The problem is that calorie restriction is kind of hard. It's kind of boring. And it's not that fun to not eat food. So intermittent fasting is a way to mimic calorie restriction and the way that we recommend doing it is by doing what's called a 16-8 intermittent fast. So that means that you fast for 16 hours a day and then you eat for eight hours a day. So you're effectively compressing your eating window to being a, an eight hour window. And when you do it that way, you can eat to satiation and you can feel good. And the 16 hours of fasting that does include your sleep, just it kind of passes. It's, it's not even that difficult to do. And we've seen tremendous benefits from the people who have come through our coaching program. When they do it, they end up losing weight faster. They end up lowering their fasting insulin levels and their post-meal insulin levels. They lower their A1C values. They lower their fasting glucose. They lower their post-meal everything. They become less insulin resistant. They've gotten off of many cardiovascular medications, statin medications, gotten off of blood pressure medication, and their lives improve in ways that they never even thought were possible. So if you don't have intermittent fasting inside of your regimen, I highly, highly recommend integrating it in. And it's just another thing that you can do in addition to a plant-based diet, in addition to exercise, that's going to have a very powerful impact on reversing the insulin resistance metabolic um, condition. A couple follow-ups here uh, on this. Um, when you're talking about fasting and condensing that eating window, if somebody's unfamiliar with this, does that mean that they should be focusing on more calorically dense meals to make sure that they're still hitting that 2000 or how should they really approach eating at that point? Okay. So when you are eating food in that eight hour window, okay, I don't, I don't necessarily want you to try and eat with a calculator in your hand. Okay. Human beings were never designed to have to use a calorie tracker in their phone in order to figure out how much food to eat. Okay. We've just kind of developed this habit because a lot of people are overweight and they don't exactly know how much calories are in their food, okay? So what I want you to do instead is I want you to become a more intuitive eater. I want you to eat until you're about 80% full and then stop eating. It's just that simple, okay? I don't really care how many calories you put into your body, right? And I don't mean to be crass when I say that, but if you have a particular calorie requirement and you're trying to get that calorie requirement in eight hours, chances are it's going to be relatively hard for you to get to that calorie requirement. So let's just say for the sake of argument that you're trying to hit 2000 calories within an eight hour window. Okay. I mean, you could, you could certainly do that. You could go above 2000 calories, but chances are what, what, what intermittent fasting does is it condenses your eating window such that when you try and get to that 2000 calorie marker, you end up actually undershooting it. And then you end up losing a couple of calories here and there, 200 calories today, 200 calories tomorrow, 300 calories the next day. And that translates to weight loss in the long term. Okay. So don't eat like a calculator, eat like a human. Okay. Eat like an animal would eat in the wild. They eat a little bit of food and then they relax. Then maybe they eat a little bit of food a little bit later and then they relax. Okay. If you can do that and you can have maybe two meals, maybe three meals within an eight hour window and just not eat until you're overly satiated, then what you're likely to find is that you actually induce a negative calorie balance 
which is what's going to translate to weight loss and improved insulin sensitivity. That's the goal. And if you can do that, and you can do that over the course of time, then you're setting yourself up for significant improvements. Yeah. And, and so here's something else. A lot of us, you were just kind of hinting at this though, still subscribe to the theory that you should eat small meals frequently. If somebody really is just kind of grazing throughout the day, getting something every two hours, every 90 minutes, something like that, what effect might that have on their insulin resistance? Or is it totally dependent upon the type of food that they're eating? Okay. That's a great question. So it's dependent on the amount of food that they're consuming. It's dependent on the type of food that they're eating and it's dependent on the timing of the food that they're eating. So you, you're right in the sense that all three of those things matter. There's no question about it. But if we're going to try and answer one particular question, which is, is it better to eat? Let's say you have an eight hour eating window. Is it smarter to eat one meal at the beginning of the eight hours and maybe one meal towards the end? Or is it smarter to eat four different meals spaced out about, you know, call it two hours apart from one another within that eight hour window? And the answer is what the research demonstrates is that the former is better. Okay. The former is better, meaning have one larger meal at the beginning and one larger meal at the end, because time is your friend. Your digestive system benefits from not digesting food. You do know if you are snacking on food consistently, then what that means, they say in the scientific world that you're in a chronic state of postprandial metabolism. What the heck does that mean? It means that most of the time your digestive system is trying to digest and transport nutrients. Okay. Postprandial basically just means after a meal. So if you're constantly asking your digestive system to work and work and work and work and work and not give it the rest that it actually should be given, then you end up creating, you increase your risk for many disease processes. And as a result of that, if you switch your eating pattern to being, instead of snacking all the time to having a larger meal and then a longer state of rest where you're not in a postprandial metabolism, and then another larger meal, you give yourself the opportunity to turn your digestive system off. That's what you want. When your digestive system is off, good things happen in all tissues. That's why the fasting period of 16 hours is effective. But even within that eight hour window, if you can turn on and turn off, that's gonna also benefit you in the long term.